Hello everyone, my name is Narin and in this session, not exactly session, it's a series of sessions, you're going to learn exactly what is a distributed system. And in this particular series of sessions, you're going to actually learn distributed data store, distributed computing, distributed file system, distributed messaging, you know, distributed applications and distributed ledgers. I'm going to make videos on each and every topics individually so that you can go back and refer anytime you want. And this particular uh, video series is aimed at the entry-level um, software engineers who haven't worked on distributed systems, who, who are learning the software development recently, or they want to learn even more. If you already know how the multiple applications or multiple servers work together, and this is not designed for you. Nevertheless, you can go through these videos uh, to learn the basic concepts uh, or to make your basic um, concepts stronger. What is a distributed system? Uh, the very simple answer to this is, it's a group of computer which work to accomplish a common goal, or um, even if there are goals are different, uh, it's not the single machine which is working to accomplish that particular job. It's the collections of computer. And these computers, computers are not kind of super computers. They are kind of commodity uh, computers, which um, commodity computer as in the computers which you have at your home, um, like a normal desktop, right? You can add these, you can group these computers together and make them a distributed uh, system. So now I'll take a couple of examples to make uh, you guys understand why do we need distributed systems. So the first simple example I want to take is say, for example, you have a service, say, so this is a service you have in which it takes a request and it gives out the response. Okay, it's a simple system, right? What it does is say it converts an you know, Word document to PDF. So there are a lot of online services which does that, right? Which actually converts Word document to PDF. So this is a service you're running. So now you have one server to accomplish this particular task. Now for, on the first month, you are kind of getting thousand requests per second. This is fine. So on the first month, it can easily handle. On the second month, it is it started to see about 10,000 requests per second. Now we think it can easily handle. But on the third month, now it saw about 1 lakh requests per second. Now your users are complaining that your server is taking more time to convert Word to PDF that way your user experience is degraded. So what you will do is, say you, you will think initially that maybe the power or the capability of this server is kind of overused. Now you need to upgrade the server to handle this much traffic. So what you will do is, say, consider initially you had the server of about, you know, eight GB of RAM, or say 100 gigabytes of memory. Now what you will think is maybe I need to upgrade the RAM, upgrade the hard disk so that it becomes faster or even I upgrade the processor which you had earlier. So what you do on the third month is say you will buy 128 GB RAM which is actually much costlier and say about 500 GB of hard disk and you will buy a even new processor and upgrade this server. Okay now all good. On the third month easily it can handle one lakh request per second. What if on the fourth month, your service becomes so popular that you started to see about one million requests per second. Again, you will think of, okay, maybe 128 GB of RAM is not sufficient. Maybe I need to buy even bigger RAM, maybe 256 GB RAM, okay? You will upgrade, upgrade it again, but how long you can keep doing the same thing? So basically what you're trying to do is called as vertical scaling. You're kind of upgrading the existing single server, server's capability even more. By buying, uh, you know, much um, a bigger capability hard hardware, like RAM or hard disk or, you know, processors, right? So you're kind of upgrading the single machine uh, to have much, you know, bigger or higher capabilities to serve this much traffic. So this is actually called as vertical scaling, okay? Fine. Now on contrary, there was one more guy. So what he was doing is, he was also running the same server, same kind of service, which initially he also had a GB of RAM and just say 100 GB of 
hard disk. Now, initially, he also saw, first month, he saw 1,000 requests. So the single server is happy to handle that much service, uh, that much, uh, you know, request. On the second month, second month he saw 10,000 requests. The server can handle easily, right? Just like the other guy's server. On the third month, again, he saw one lakh request. Now the users are complaining that, yeah, I am seeing the service degraded or the word 2 PDF is taking more time. What he does is he actually does horizontal scaling. What is horizontal scaling? Okay, that means that instead of upgrading this existing server's capabilities that RAM or processor or hard disk, he actually bought one more server, that is server two, and then he made his service, um, which is now running with two servers. Okay, now he was easily able to handle one lakh requests. Fine, he had double the capabilities. Maybe he had about Consider he bought one more machine, which is of 8 GB RAM only. So total he has about 16 GB of RAM. So he was able to easily, you know, handle one lakh request. Now immediately his service also become hit and he is able to see 1 million requests. Now, now what he does, he can't just, he won't just upgrade the existing machine. Instead he buy a lot of other, you know, a lot of, lot many other computers, like uh, simple computers, which is, which has about 8 GB of RAM and 100 GB of hard disk. What he does is, He actually bought four or more computers, so he added them to his service. That is, now he has about six computers all together running um, together to provide the service Word document to PDF. Now, how cool is that? He never took down the server to upgrade his system to accommodate one million requests. Even though he's, if he sees on the fifth month, say two million requests, all he has to do is just go to the shop, buy a couple more servers and add it to the existing cluster of machines or group of machines and uh, say, he renamed it to S7, S8, and S9, and S10. So now in his server form, he's actually running about 12 servers, okay, 12 servers. And all these servers are like cheap computers or commodity computers, like the computers you have at your home, okay, the kids use this, right? 8 GB RAM and about um, you know, 256 GB of hard disk or something like that, right? So they are much cheaper than the other guy who bought about like 256 GB of RAM and then even one TB or you know, much higher hard disk. So it's this, this system seems convincing. Whenever you see more requests, okay, you just need to buy more machines and then add it up. On contrary, when say, for example, for some reason, his traffic went low because Google launched Word to PDF service in his drive, okay? Now, he's, he's seeing much lesser traffic. Now, the traffic on, say, 10th month is kind of one lakh requests only. What do you need to do? You don't need to take down the service. All you need to do is decommission these machines or sell, sell them off or just keep it in your garage, okay? What it does is he just took down the service from the group of computers so you just now, you just have about four computers running or even you can make the servers up and running with only three machines. And none of the time, whenever he is upgrading the system or downgrading the system, his service was switched off. His service was available like with about 100% of the time uh, whenever he was upgrading or downgrading. So that's the advantage of, you know, horizontal scaling in which instead of, you know, increasing the capability of a single machine, which is serving um, your, you know, which is actually executing your task, you can buy smaller computers and add it to the clusters so that collectively all of these servers together um, does a common job. And when you do, when you actually do horizontal scaling, the resulting system is actually called as distributed system because your task is distributed among these many servers considered you you are actually running all of the servers. In this case, so if you get 1 million requests, a couple of requests were handled by this server, a couple of thousand requests were handled by this server, and similarly, you know, a couple of thousands of requests were handled by each and every system. So not even, not one server was overloaded or none of the server was kept um, with, um, with no job in, in his, um, you know, um, machine. So basically, 
the job was distributed to all of these machines and the job was done at the actual expected time. So this works better and this system is called as distributed system. So you must be thinking vertical scaling is cost effective, but horizontal scaling, you need to shell out more money. Kind of true, but only for initial days, but on a long run, and also when you're getting more traffic coming into your system, on a long run, horizontal scaling, you know, actually saves a lot of money. Look at this graph, for example. So this tells you that um, initially vertical scaling kind of looks profitable but horizontal scaling will need to have more investments. But after this break even point, you kind of actually save a lot of money on horizontal scaling than vertical scaling. So now what are the advantages of having a distributed system? So first thing is saving money, I have already explained. Now the other main important advantages of having a distributed system of your application is that first one is fault tolerance. What that means is, if any fault occurs, you can your system can actually tolerate that. So that's the meaning of that. Any fault, it actually tolerates. How? So take the vertical scaling in which you have only one powerful machine, right? You have one powerful server, okay? So now it is taking the request and giving out the responses. It is taking multiple requests and then giving out the responses. Now what if the the SMPS or the supply, the, the power supply of this particular server is like burnt out. In that case, this machine will go down. And what happens is now your service can never accept um, requests until the server's power system is replaced totally, right? So you will have the downtime of your service. But on contrary, if you have horizontal scale or a distributed system, what happens? In this case, you have smaller machines which are distributed, okay? And you have like one server here, one server here, and one server. And it is, uh, you know, not powerful machine like this one. It is smaller machine. And I also, I will be also clever, clever enough to keep these machines in different continents. Say, for example, I keep one machine in Australia and one in Asia and then one in US. But actually, on collect collectively, they are actually serving the same traffic for the same application which I have just mentioned, like Word to PDF, right? So in this case, in the vertical scaling, the server was placed in, it can actually be placed in only one location. Say, for example, you are placing in US. So if it, went, if it went down, like you, none of the users from the whole world can access your service. They can't access, right? But in this case, now I have three different servers of smaller machines, but they are placed in different regions or continents. Now, how fault tolerant work. So say for example, if the server in Asia went down for some reasons, maybe for power failure itself. Now what happens, you still have two servers running in the collective or group of uh, servers for the same service. Now, if the request uh, in the DNS, right, when the users from Asia request, obviously they will not have the servers in their region, but instead that the request would be redirected to some of the nearest uh, you know, data centers or some of the nearest servers. In that case, maybe Australia is somewhere near to Asia, maybe the requests will be redirected to Australia and they will still get the response back. You might be thinking, yeah, the load on the server will increase. Exactly, the load on the server will increase. Maybe user will see more latency or more time to convert Word to PDF, but still your server or the service didn't go down or your users will not see downtime at, at all. And that's the very important uh, you know, aspect for anybody who runs this service, say for example, Google or Facebook or Instagram. So you have you ever seen downtime at all, right? No, except sometimes that is the 99.9%. .9%. Sometimes it happens. Uh, if, if some servers on your region fails, you will see some glitches here and there, but actually, you have never seen downtime more than a minute of any of these servers because they have the distributed system. They have thousands of servers distributed across the world. So even some machines fail, there are other machines to take care of the request and response. Okay. Now the second thing is low latency. So what does low latency means? Latency is the late. Okay. Means how slow you get or how, how much time it takes to serve something, serve something right? 
So how does low latency work? So in this case, as I mentioned in the vertical scaling case, you have one server and you have placed the server in the United States. What happens if a guy, maybe I myself from Bangalore, trying to convert a um, you know, word to PDF? In that case, my request should travel from all the way from India to US, okay? It easily take for light to, light takes about one second to reach there. That means that my request will go after one second. And after this server processes it, say it took some couple of milliseconds or took, or in the worst case, it, think it as like it took one second, okay? That means that add one second extra for the processing at the server side. And then it responded back. Now, after one second, I get it. So totally three seconds for me to get that response back. So that is actually bad, right? So for any request and response, three seconds is a lot. Anything can happen in three seconds. But instead, on contrary, if I have horizontally scaled or distributed system, in which what happens is, I have a server somewhere in Asia, somewhere maybe in Singapore or somewhere. From India to Singapore, it hardly takes about you know, 50 milliseconds. So if you have distributed system, I will have request reaching time of 50 milliseconds. Consider worst case, it took one second to process. And again, to get back the request, response i get i take 50 millisecond so totally 1.100 or 1.100 milliseconds so see see the latency or see the time taken to get the thing done or the job done right in this case in the vertical scaling case it took easily three seconds in the case of distributed or horizontally scaled i just took 1.100 mill you know second like not actually millisecond 1.100 second right so this is what the advantage of having you know horizontal scaling or distributed uh, system